Hello everyone, welcome and welcome back to Amy's Bookshelf. Firstly, I want to start off by saying thank you so much for a thousand subscribers on my channel. Um, I've really enjoyed recently making new videos. I kind of fell off the wagon a bit last year with doing it because um, it's just, it's quite a time consuming thing to do. And I'm very used to like content creation in terms of posting on Instagram and TikTok and YouTube is like a whole different ball game. Um, so yeah, I did stop doing it for a while, but I'm back and I want to continue with the rhythm that I have currently had since January. Um, so I'll be trying to get you new videos every week and just talking about books and giving you recommendations and just enjoying myself. So I hope you enjoy it too. <laughs> um, so today I will be doing a video that I've seen a lot of people do. Most recently, I think the book Leo did it. Um, and that's basically just tier ranking popular book top books that I have read. So I have created my own tiers. Um, I'll put it up here and they are God tier books. Um, which, you know, doesn't really need an explanation. So, so, so good. I mean, and they're just really good books, but don't quite make it to God tier. Solid books. They're ones that are good. You know, they're not bad, but not that memorable. Uh, it was okay. You know, it's not awful, but would you ever read it again? Probably not. So, so, so bad. Again, no, no explanation needed. And then DNF. So I have 25 books um, that I have read that are popular on BookTok um, and I will put them in a tier and basically tell you a little bit about how they've ended up there. So let's get started. First up, we have We Were Liars by E. Lockhart. So this was a book that I read because my friend at uni, Jazz, um, from Travels and Fiction, she uh, recommended it to me. It was a time, I, I don't think we'd been friends very long, so we hadn't quite realised that we don't have very similar taste in books. Um, so I'd read it because she said it was really good. And I remember finishing it and thinking, why Why do people think this is good? I don't understand. Um, the characters are just all really unlikable and the ending is terrible, in my opinion. Um, so I didn't get it. But then it had this resurgence on TikTok. Um, so I borrowed Jazz's copy again and reread it just in case I thought maybe I'm wrong. Maybe everybody else is right and this is a good book and I need to give it a second chance because it's not very long. It was only like 200 and something pages. So short enough that I could just give it a quick reread and make up my mind again. And I stand by what I said, it is not a good book. So for that reason, it is in so, so, so bad. <laughs> and apologies if you disagree with that, but I, I really feel strongly that I don't understand why that book is popular. So that's why it will be there. Uh, okay, and next up we have The Song of Achilles, and that is going straight up to God tier. Um, I just adored that book. I love Greek mythology retellings anyway, any kind of mythology retellings actually. I find myths just so fascinating because they're always so wild. <laughs> um, and I especially love when modern writers put their own spin on it and their own interpretation on it um, and like bring it into a completely new story and bring it to a completely new audience as well. Um, and yeah, Song of Achilles was no different. I adored not only the mythology part of it, but also the fact that it had this kind of epic romance as well. Um, so yeah, it just ticked all the boxes for me and it's a popular book for a reason. It sounds very basic, but I love the Song of Achilles. Okay, and next up we have They Both Die at the End by Adam Silvera. So this is an interesting one because I didn't hate it. I really loved the premise and I loved the romance. I always love romance. Um, and it was a very quick read. So really, I can't have too many problems with it. However, it's one of those books where I just got so hung up on the logistics that I think I stopped myself enjoying it as much as I probably could have done. If you've read it, you'll know what I mean. I don't wanna go into too much detail, but the book is literally called They Die at the End. So it is about how they die and the circumstances around that. Um, so yeah, I think I should have enjoyed it more than I did, but there was just something holding me back. And I think it's because I was worrying too much about how this could possibly happen in real life. Um, so for that reason, I am putting it in, it was okay. Although I think this is a me problem and not a the book problem because I don't think other people would care as much about the logistics of how they died. Okay, uh, next up we have Circe, um, the second Greek mythology book in this list um, and the second Madeleine Miller book as well. And that is going into solid. 
Um, I didn't love it as much as Song of Achilles. Again, loved it for the fact that it was a modern Greek mythology retelling. Loved it for that reason. But I, if I'm going to choose to read a mythology retelling from the perspective of a woman, I think Pat Barker's The Silence of the Girls is so much better. Um, and that feels mean to say I shouldn't compare them. They don't need to be compared. But I think I felt underwhelmed by Cersei because it could have been so much better than it was. Um, but ha ha having said that, I did still enjoy it. I thought it was a really good book. It was just one of those ones that didn't have a lasting impact on me, whereas The Silence of the Girls, The Song of Achilles did. So for that reason, I'm going to put it in solid and no higher, but it is a good book and I would recommend reading it, especially if you want to read more Greek retellings. Next up, we have Heart Stopper by Alice Oseman, and this is going into so, so, so good. Um, I loved it. It's really wholesome. It's really lovely. The TV show adaptation was amazing as well. If you've not dabbled in any graphic novels, it's a great one to start with because it's just so much fun, but also has so much emotion. And especially when you get further into the series, there's a lot of depth and layers and so many important topics raised in them as well. Um, and I think Alice Oseman does it so brilliantly. Um, and it, because it's a graphic novel, it's just so fun to read as well because of the images and for that reason, I don't have anything bad to say about it. So, 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 so good is a correct place for that to be. Next, we have The Silent Patient. Um, now, <laughs> this is an interesting one. I'm going to put it in It Was Okay. I read this because it was really popular and so many people had said, oh, the twist is amazing, the twist, the twist. And so I was excited for the twist. And don't get me wrong, it wasn't one of those books where I guessed the twist, where I knew what was coming, where I was really disappointed with the twist. But I think when all was said and done, I just didn't like the plot enough for the twist to have felt rewarding, if that makes any sense. Um, I remember I didn't love the characters, I didn't love the overall plot. And I, while I agree the twist was clever, it wasn't enough for me to save the rest of the book and what I didn't like about that. It wasn't terrible, it wasn't great, so it is going in, it was okay. Next up is Normal People by Sally Rooney, and it will surprise no one that I'm putting it in so, so, so bad. I hated Normal People, it was really boring, I didn't like any of the characters, I didn't get the point of the book, it just wasn't for me. Having said that, if you've seen my content before and you've heard me talk about Normal People, you know that I did love the TV adaptation and I will happily rewatch that. And I think it's just one of those times where I'm going to consume Sally Rooney as TV and movie adaptations rather than as books because I just don't think I get on with her writing. And I mean, I can't deny that she is an incredibly popular writer, so she's obviously doing something right. She doesn't need my approval. I don't matter to her. It doesn't matter that I don't like normal people. And like I said, I will happily watch any adaptation because I think that's just a better way for me to enjoy her stories. So we'll leave it there. Next up is Ace of Spades. Now I actually read this as an audiobook, again off the recommendation of Jazz from Travels and Fiction, and I really loved it. So it is going in so, so, so good. Um, it's a really cool premise for a book. It's kind of tricky to talk about without spoiling, so I won't go into too much detail, but it's set in a school, um, in like a secondary school or high school, um, and it is about the pupils there. The narrative switches between two pupils in particular. Um, and all I'll say is if you like sort of Black Mirror or Get Out, I think this is the book for you. It's a YA book, but it feels much more mature than that. Um, so don't be put off if young adult books normally aren't your thing. I definitely think as someone who only reads new adult or adult books would still really enjoy it because it is a really clever book and you have to respect it for what it's trying to do. Um, so if you want like gripping, good mystery, thrillery books, then yeah, Ace of Spades is definitely one you should pick up. Next is A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson, and this is going into so, so, so good as well. Um, I've read two of the trilogy now, so A Good Girl's Guide to Murder and Good Girl, Bad Blood. Oh no, As Good as Dead, and then the third one is Good Girl, Bad Blood, and I haven't read that one yet. But again, similarly to Ace of Spades, just really good YA thriller, really clever, keeps you on the edge of the seat. I love with A Good Girl's Guide to Murder that Holly Jackson really plays around with different types of storytelling. So there's sections of like podcasts and diaries as well as just a standard prose narrative. Um, and I really loved that. Um, and Pippa, the protagonist is really great. I really loved her. There were parts of it that were perhaps a little bit maybe unreasonable or unrealistic, but if you can just suspend your disbelief, then you can get into it and enjoy it very, very thoroughly. So again, would really recommend it if you want a good thriller. 
Next is A Little Life. Again, no shock, it's going into God tier. So I think my opinion of A Little Life, um, so I read it in 2018, so a little while ago now, and arguably before it had a lot of popularity, and that's not me being like, oh, I, I found it before it was popular. It's just a fact. I read it before a lot of people on the internet kind of discovered it. Um, and so when I read it and I bawled my eyes out, I was so incredibly connected to the book that it could not not be a god tier book for me because I was so emotionally invested. I loved all of the characters. I loved the storytelling. And it's like a 700 page book with tiny, tiny font. And if you can get all the way to the end of something like that and still love it, I don't think you can deny <laughs> your love for it when that is the case. Um, so yeah, since then, I have seen a lot of really interesting reviews about it. A lot of people who didn't love it because they do feel it sort of fits into the category of trauma porn and is perhaps literature that maybe doesn't need to be written because it's arguably more damaging than it is um, productive. However, I did really enjoy it and I don't want to take away from the enjoyment that I had from it when I first read it. I do want to reread it, but it is a big book, so it's quite a big undertaking, so I haven't yet, but I will at some point. So for now, I'm going to leave it in God tier because I stand by what I said and I want to be true to the feelings I had when I read it, even if I might change my mind when I do reread it eventually. Next is It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover. Now, I am also going to put this in so, so, so good. This is actually similar to A Little Life because when I read it, I my feelings about the book initially were that I loved it. I really loved it as a romance, although romance is definitely the wrong genre for it, but I loved it for its characters and their relationships and sort of how the book was commenting on their dynamic as a whole throughout. And like I said, I want to be true to my feelings when I first read it, and that was that I did really love it. However, similarly to A Little Life, since then I have re read a ton of reviews about people who didn't particularly enjoy it. Again, saying that it might be considered trauma porn, or there are elements of it that are somewhat problematic, or that could be perceived in a way that is romanticising things like domestic violence. I completely understand everybody who has those kind of comments, and I think... Reading is always interesting. I mean, any form of media is really interesting because it's all about interpretation. It's all about your own experiences and how you can read a book or watch a film and what you take away from that having lived the life you've lived. So I do think when you read books and when there are reviews of books, you have to understand that there's a nuance to the reviews because the people who have read them or watched the film or whatever you're doing have had different life experiences. So it's kind of hard to be black and white about it. Um, so that's why I'm gonna put it in so, so good, but it's kind of got a caveat in that I understand why people wouldn't put it there. I understand why people would put it a lot lower down. So I'll leave it there. Next is Red, White and Royal Blue, and that is also going in so, so, so good. I have read two of Casey McQuiston's books, Red, White and Royal Blue and One Last Stop, and I really wanna read the third one. Uh, I Kissed Shana Wheeler, I think it's called. Um, yeah, really great. Um, Red, White and Royal Blue was just a really fun, great new adult romance, I think it is. Um, and yeah, I don't really have anything bad to say about it. I love me a romance, so I can't deny that that was a great romance. And that's all. Next is The Secret History by Donna Tartt. And that is going to go into DNF, because I did DNF it. Um, if you've seen any, me talking about the secret history on TikTok or on Instagram, you'll know I didn't like it because it was a very long book, nothing much happened, everyone was very unlikable, I just didn't get it, didn't get it at all. Um, I got a lot of hate for it when I admitted that on TikTok, which is bizarre because to be honest, everyone's allowed their own opinion and I completely get people disagreeing with me, you're obviously allowed to disagree with me, but the way some people approach it on TikTok is 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 bad. It's very nasty. They, you know, essentially tell you that you, you're dumb and that's why you um didn't like the book because you you you're too unintelligent to understand it. So yeah, that's obviously not true. Um, I just didn't like it. I've read The Goldfinch as well by Donna Tartt. I didn't like that. I just don't think she's for me, and that's okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you have read it and you did like it, feel free to message me. I do love conversations about it. Just don't approach anything with any kind of disdain or hatred, and it'll always be a nice conversation. I'm sure. 
Next up is Daisy Jones and the Six, and I'm gonna put this in solid. I have read quite a few books by Taylor Jenkins Reid now, so I've read Daisy Jones, I've read Evelyn Hugo, which I've just now realised is not on this list and definitely should have been, um, so apologies. Um, I've read one True Loves and I've read Malibu Rising. I've had a mixed experience with Taylor Jenkins Reid. The first book I read by her was Daisy Jones and I did love it and then I read Evelyn Hugo and I loved that even more and if I'd remembered to put this on here it would have would have been in so 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 good. Um, but One True Loves and Malibu Rising weren't as good for me so overall very mixed opinions about her books um, but Daisy Jones was really good. I loved the format, I loved how different it was, um, I really loved the characters and everything about it so yeah I did really enjoy that as a book. Um, I'm not sure I'd read more of her books in a hurry just because I haven't had a great experience with some of the others so yeah but Daisy Jones was great and I would recommend. Then we have My Year of Rest and Relaxation, which I finished literally today and it is going in so, so, so bad. Um, yeah, I've never read a book with such a self-centered main character. Um, and I just didn't really understand the point of the book. Maybe I just didn't get it. Maybe I was missing something. There was like more context or, just something about it that I should have known that I didn't. But I really was glad when I had finally turned the last page because I just didn't get it. I didn't like the main character or any of the characters actually. None of them were nice. Everything was so nasty and, and boring as well at the same time. So yeah, it wasn't for me. But I, because I only finished it today, I haven't had a chance to properly like delve into a lot of reviews. So I'm gonna go read some reviews of it. Not that I think it would change my mind, but I just wanna see what other people think. And especially people that did really like it and whether maybe I was just missing something. Next we have The House in the Cerulean Sea and this is going into or oh, either so, so, so good or God tier. I'll put it in so, so, so good. The House on the Cerulean Sea is one of the most wholesome books I've ever read. Essentially, it's just a really cute romance, but it also happens to include these mythological characters um, or mythological slash supernatural characters. So it's an orphanage where all of the children have some kind of ability. So they're not human. There's like a gnome and there's uh, a boy who's like the son of the devil. So there's a, like a lot of different um, characters all with either like a power or something that makes them not human. Um, and that's the orphanage is run by this man and this other man. I don't remember anybody's names, but this other man comes along to inspect the orphanage and it is essentially about their connection while also showing us the story of all of these children and how they ended up in the orphanage. And honestly, it's just delightful. My heart was so full reading the whole thing. Um, yeah, I really loved it. Then we have Cinderella is Dead, and this is gonna go in solid. It's close to going in It Was Okay, but I feel like that's disrespectful to Caelan Bayron because I did really like it. However, if I was gonna recommend any of Caelan Bayron's books, I would recommend This Poison Heart over Cinderella is Dead for sure. So I'm probably biased because This Poison Heart has Greek mythology in it, which as we know, I like, but Cinderella is Dead was a really good premise However, the ending was rushed and for that reason, it sort of ruined the rest of the book for me. But it was still a good book, which is why I'm going to put it in solid. This Poison Heart, however, I think is just so much more complex. Um, it is a duology, so the end of the first book is kind of a cliffhanger and there's so much, so many unanswered questions. So I think for that reason, it can't really feel rushed because there was no need to finalise anything um, because it's this duology. But yeah, there, there were so many elements to it I really loved. I really loved the main character and her exploring her identity and what it means for her to have magical abilities because she can like grow plants um, and produce things out of like nature. It's a really cool power. Um, and then also her relationship with her two mums, which is a really great element to the book. Then them finding out about her family history, them going to this new house. And there's just thing after thing after thing that adds layers to this book, which I really, really loved. Um, so that is definitely my favourite Caelan Bayron book. And Cinderella is Dead is also good but not incredible. Um, and yeah, like I said, I prefer This Poison Heart to Cinderella is Dead, but still good, still good. Then we've got Act Your Age Eve Brown, which is going into So 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 Good. I love all of the Brown Sisters books. Talia Hibbert does romance incredibly. I would really recommend any of their books. I've only read the Brown Sisters trilogy, not any of the others, um, but I would happily read any of them because I'm sure they're all great. 
Um, but yeah, just Eve Brown was good, Danny Brown was good, Chloe Brown was good. That's all I need to say. Then we've got the Midnight Library. This is going to go into It Was Okay. Um, again, it's one of those interesting books where retrospectively I feel like I might have a different opinion to what I thought when I first read it. When I first read it, I thought it was an interesting premise. It deals with the afterlife, which is obviously a really cool thing to explore in a book. Um, but I think similarly to They Both Die at the End, logistically, I just kept getting hung up on things. And I kept thinking, well, what if this happened? And how has this happened? And I was just overthinking it by the end, I think. Um, and also I have read other people's reviews and I understand why they think it's it's underwhelming as well. There's not much thought put into it, put it that way. Um, so yeah, I do get why people lose interest in it um, and don't love it, but that's okay, because some people do really love it. So for me, it's gonna go in It Was Okay, because it wasn't terrible but I didn't love it. Then I'm gonna do all three of these at the same time because they're all Emily Henry books and I feel like we can discuss them at the same time. So first we have Beach Read, which is going in so, so good. Then we have People We Met On Vacation, which is going in solid. And then we have Book Lovers, which is going in so, so, so good. I really love Emily Henry. As a romance writer, she's brilliant. I love her like contemporary settings. I love the relationships between her protagonists. I think they're done very well, very realistically, while also being really good escapism. So she ticks a lot of boxes for me. People We Met On Vacation, I think was missing something for me, which is why it's not in So 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 Good, but I love all of her books. So they are all well-deserved to be that far up the tier ranking. Okay, three left. So first we have Verity, which is going in so, so, so bad. I hated Verity a lot. Again, going back to some of the other books I've spoken about, logistically, this book was so confusing, but I will not give it the benefit of the doubt like I did with the other ones because the ending of this book, I felt like was the biggest cop-out in history. It's like, you know, the idea of Alice in Wonderland and then it was all a dream, similar to that, same vibes. Like, it's just a cop out. You haven't tried hard enough. You didn't want to write a proper ending. So you've just ran quickly with this, tied it up in a bow and sent it off to your publisher. So I hated it. And there was nothing about it that could have saved it for me because the rest of the book I didn't enjoy either. I didn't get the relationship between the main character and the guy in the house that felt weird. And then everything about the children also felt weird. It was really icky and I just... I kind of like my skin was crawling while reading it, but not in a good way, not in a pleasant way. So yeah, definitely right to be in the bottom tier. And on a similar note, uh, Things We Never Got Over is also going in so, so, so bad. This would 100% have been a DNF for me had it not been a book club read. I made sure to finish it so that I could discuss it properly because I run the book club, so I need to know what happens in the book. But oh my God, it was awful. It was strange it, it felt like it was written by a man because of the way that the women were perceived which was a red flag um but then also the romance was strange because the characters just couldn't make up their mind about each other or about themselves and the way they acted completely contradicted with what they were thinking honestly it was a mess i have no idea one how it got published and then two how it got so popular that makes no sense to me whatsoever so yeah safe to say i hated that i won't be reading anything else by lucy score but you know if you enjoyed it you do you you live your life okay and finally we have the seven deaths of evelyn hardcastle which i'm gonna put in god tier because i loved it um i've read both of stuart turton's books so the seven and a half deaths of evelyn hardcastle and the devil in the dark water and they are both brilliant mysteries um edge of your seat while also being quite clever the characters are all well thought out three-dimensional and they just have a lot of complexities that i really appreciate um in a thriller in a mystery and yeah really loved that so i have nothing bad to say <laughs> um it's definitely again one i want to reread to make sure i have the same opinion but also just relive the fun because i really did enjoy it the first time um yeah okay so they are all of my books um 
I think that doesn't look too bad. I've got a lot in the two top tiers, not too much down the bottom. Um, yeah, but please let me know if you like vehemently disagree with any of my books um, because yeah, I love having an opposing opinion to somebody. Uh, but yeah, overall, book talk's not done me too bad. I think I can rely on some recommendations. I'd say maybe the romance recommendations because romance seems to be more at the top than at the bottom. Um, but yeah, I'll continue reading book talk books just to see if I like them. I hope you've enjoyed this video and um, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and please like this video and I will see you next time. Bye!